Awesome. Um, welcome to the last day of July, um, which is kind of shocking to believe that we are uh, now approaching August um, really swiftly. <laughs> um, let's see. I uh, This is Natasha Dutweather Davy, Director of Affordable Rental Housing here at Oregon Housing Community Services. Um, so thanks for joining this monthly partner call. Um, I wanted to just start by covering what will be um, presenting this uh, Friday at our Housing Stability Council meeting um, and uh, loop back on a couple other, um, uh, you know, things going on in our affordable rental housing world. Um, let's see. And then we can kind of open for any questions uh, that are coming up for folks. Um, so we actually have a pretty light agenda at Housing Stability Council um, this month. I uh, think that is not the not likely to happen very often, so it's pretty nice. We'll take advantage of it. Um, we have just one item um, that is a, just a kind of a um, update to um, area median income restrictions for recent property. Um, and then we are bringing, um, Dana Schultz will be bringing the slate of uh, recommended, recommended projects that had applied through the Permanent Supportive Housing NOFA, um, which is uh, a pretty exciting group of projects. Um, and that is really all that we'll be bringing on a otherwise also very light <laughs> agenda. Uh, I did want to flag for folks that the Home ARP NOFA, uh, American Rescue Plan NOFA has opened. Um, that, I'm trying to find the, that is the resources um, that will be at, or has gone um, out through HUD, obviously, um, to support and sustain um, uh, development of housing for um, to serve those uh, homeless or at risk of homelessness. Um, and so uh, I was going to just grab a link to it. I had it right here. Um, that so the offering has been posted. Um, and the um, training webinar will be tomorrow afternoon. I'll paste that in the chat. Um, for anybody who is interested or uh, could potentially be interested, it does include um, both uh, development resources as well as uh, capacity resources to help uh, that work happen. Um, I think uh, that, and that, so that is uh, NOFA that uh, Andrea Mathiason, um, Home Program Manager, and Kimi Weyoka from our Capacity Program Manager have been uh, working on. And so there's a pretty broad set of eligibility around the capacity resources, and I really encourage everybody uh, to check that out uh, if you are doing work in community to support uh, housing development um, and uh, coordination locally. Um, so I guess before I go further, any questions around uh, any of those things, our council agenda or the home ARP NOFA? Okay, so just be sure to stay tuned for the NOFA training webinar tomorrow. You can look at a copy of the NOFA in that link I posted. Um, and then the um, kind of one other uh, thing that I wanted to cover, I was going to say this, af this afternoon, is um, just uh, to let everybody know for broad awareness that we have added a couple uh, new assistant directors to our team here in the affordable rental housing division. Um, so we currently, um, you know, faces and, and uh, faces have, sh have shifted around a little bit. Um, Roberto Franco is our uh, assistant director of development resources and production. Rick Brzezica is our assistant director of planning and policy. James Hackett is our Assistant Director of Portfolio Administration, 
And I'm really excited that we have brought uh, Heather Pate uh, back to OHCS as the Assistant Director of Development Operations. Um, for those that are uh, have been working with OHCS for some time, um, she was at OHCS, I wanna say left around five years ago. Um, and so has a significant wealth of expertise around um, uh, you know, the business of funding uh, affordable rental housing and um, and uh, all that that takes. And so we'll be really focused on operational um, evolution on our funding side of, uh, of the equation as we go forward in the coming months, coming out of legislative session uh, with uh, additional investment from the legislature to evolve our business practices and um, and look to seek to um, really centralize our application process. And so that's a body of work that Heather Pate will be doing uh, or leading um, with us here uh, in ARH. And then Tanya Evans has joined us um, as a assistant director of portfolio operations, uh, working to evolve our um, structure around um, long-term uh, compliance, asset management, all of those structures to make sure that we are really keyed to be um, able to absorb all of the growth that we'll, we are experiencing already and will continue to see in our uh, um, portfolio here at the state. And so um, I don't know, uh, Tanya or Heather, I think you both are here. If you want to say a brief hello, go Tanya first. I see your name first. Hi, everyone. For those of you who know me, it's uh, glad to be back in you know, Oregon housing and, and continue to work with you in a different capacity. For those who don't, I look forward to uh, meeting you. Um, not all at once, but uh, hopefully <laughs> over the, the next uh, several months. So um, again, I'm really excited to be back working with this group of people um, and uh, hope to see you all in the near future. Awesome. And I guess I, I failed to, I mentioned that Heather had been here in a life past. Tanya has also uh, worked at OHCS in a, a past life here. And uh, most recently, I'm sure many are familiar from the role that she had at Home Forward. So really excited to have her on board. And Heather, are you here? Hey. I'm, I'm here and I'm muted. Unmute. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Thanks. I'm uh, very excited to be back and look forward to working with you all in the recasting of our NOFAs and processes and everything else. Thanks. Awesome. Um, and I think, you know, having, uh, I feel like we have now the more capacity that we really truly need to be able to drive all of our really critical work forward um, in the coming months, we will be um, stepping into really significant engagement around how we deploy resources and what um, all of the traditional questions around resource offering, timeline, um, requirements, funding caps, set-asides, all of those uh, really big bodies of work. So um, I'm hoping that we're getting that technical advisory sent out this week to be able to hold um, time on your calendar over the next several months. Um, so we will be um, leaning into that space in the near term. Um, again, really excited um, to be able to do all of this and um, also really do need, want to make sure that we are giving um, good opportunity and motivation to, for everybody to contribute your best thinking with us as we uh, work to do uh, kind of a revamp and and set forward um, and over the over this next year. Anybody? Um, and that's really all that I had on my list. I think signaling that engagement, hoping, um, yeah. So Travis, the hoping this week we are getting. Um, actually, I think. I see that it's drafted. So I think we'll be getting out a communication this week um, that has all of the save, save the dates for engagement. I think our, we're looking to hit that off in the next, uh, in two to three weeks. Um, also are establishing and kind of leaning into making a comprehensive uh, uh, place on our website where we can be tracking all of 
the meetings, all of the documents and recordings of those when uh, there is a time that folks can't attend live. Um, but yeah, really excited about all of the opportunities. Um, so yeah, Shelly, I see your question. Um, the So I guess to speak of calendar, we have a calendar for engagement that will come out in the next, this week. Um, we will be working over the next several months to build out our funding calendar. And so um, we will be putting together like our uh, thoughts, recommendations about some strategies for that, be able to go out to you all for your input, be able to then incorporate feedback and make sure that we're hitting that right. So the idea is that we will um, learn, you know, basically put the details to what that fund offering could look like or what the time uh, timelines are um, in the next few months to hopefully pin that down with our Housing Stability Council um, in the last quarter of this year. Um, and I think that's it for me. This is short, short and sweet. But um, any questions that we should that anybody wants to talk about? Nine percent no fat. I see in the chat. I think that we are. Um, the 9% NOFA is still planned for later this year. I think we're hoping to get it out late August um, and by September um, so that um, folks can get working on that. Um, and, and that is, I think, the last offering that we have before um, we step into whatever our new process will look like. Again, aiming for our uh, going forward strategy to have a centralized application process so that there's not different NOFAs for every um, different resource that we have. Um, so hopefully to build some easier navigation of our structures as well as um, a, uh, um, a more straightforward uh, singular application to access and layer resources. Um, I see the question on the PAB offering, um, the, and I don't know, Angela, um, Parada, are you on here? I think you are. Do you want to signal anything about the next uh, programming, the remainder of private activity bonds for 2024? Sure. Hi, good afternoon. This is Angela Parada, Senior Tax Credit Programs Manager. And yes, uh, we are anticipating a release in September for the quarter two through quarter four PAB offering. Um, and folks are welcome to submit questions to the MF NOFA inbox. Um, yeah, thank you. And so, yeah, as everybody knows, we are now the updated bond bill um, uh, allocates 450 million in private activity bonds directly to OHCS to program. And so, um, that is the, the resource that we will have available after we um, take out the ones already um, using that. Um, Mariana, I see your question around uh, the, is the application similar to the CFC for those that have been around OHCS for a long time, our private, prior, app, one of the prior generations of application structures was the CFC, a consolidated funding cycle. Um, I think we are, you know, in as much as that was a singular offering that layered lots of resources to it, I think that is a general tenet of what we're looking to do move forward. I'm, we're calling it a centralized application um, system versus the CFC specifically. I think uh, those are, there's a lot of details to how we are um, putting that together. The team has been really digging in on um, various approaches to doing so. And part of what we need to get input on as we go through engagement is what that really looks like. Um, so we will be uh, having that conversation. But again, the idea being that there's one application um, that will allow us to deploy resources. And there might be timeliness to that as we cycle through the year, but um, that it would be one place of entry.
And Angela, are you um, clear right now how much private activity bonds would be, you'd be, um, we have remaining for the 2024 that's not currently obligated or reserved? I don't think I have that number with me right now. I think the that's kind of the trick of it. And I, I can make sure to include that figure when we do a, a TA release um, so that folks have some idea of uncommitted resources offered in the next um, September release. Great. Um, and let's see, Brent, I see your question. Will the upcoming 9% NOFA still be within the current updated QAP? Yes, there's not a QAP update planned before the 9% NOFA goes out. Um, let's see. <laughs> it's a tax credit question day, Angela. Um, do you know um, when the uh, what? How much nine uh, percent and nine percent credits you have to put out through that NOFA? And we could also wait till if it's yeah. No, it'll be approximately nine nine and a half million. There's um a couple of variables with the current offer with our um current in the pipeline nines, um, but at the very least, it will be 9 million and 9% credits, likely 10. Great. Um, and Jillian, uh, uh, Angela indicated that the next 4% um, PAB opening is um, expected for September. Any other questions? Okay, well, I guess with that, we can uh, give you all the gift of time. Um, appreciate your uh, time and joining us for this conversation and we will see you later. Happy uh, Monday. I'm going to say Tuesday. It's going to be a long week. Talk to you later. Thank you.